What's up, YouTube? This is your boy, Michael, coming back with some more entrepreneurial content. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can use Excel for your side hustle or your small business, and we're going to do that right after the intro. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an I'm a entrepreneur. Hey, 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 what? So there's four different reasons why you should use Excel for your small business or your startup. Number one, it's fairly easy to use, even if you don't have an extensive amount of knowledge on how to use the functions and things like that. For the most part, it's really simple. Number two, it's actually an affordable option. Instead of you going out and having QuickBooks or another business out there to actually do your bookkeeping, and it's easily accessible. The third thing is going to be, it is robust. So even if you are a beginner and you're a novice to actual Excel, you can get things done and then if you want to grow or if your knowledge grows you learn different functions and things like that Excel actually has a lot of different things that it can do for your business uh, from you being able to, to share it over the web and things like that it is very robust when it comes to its capabilities and last the reason why you should use Excel is if you have a smaller operation. So if you are a smaller business, you have a little side hustle and you just want to manage, let's say like 20 to 30 different transactions or you have one bank account, maybe two, it's really straightforward because you're not managing a whole bunch of data. But I think if you have a bigger operation, you have a bigger business, I think it's important for you to invest in something else outside of Excel. Now let's get into the how. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys into my computer and we're going to go over quite a few different functions. So let's head over to the computer right now. Hello everyone. I want to welcome you to the inside of my computer. As I said in the intro, we're going to be going over quite a few different, not only functions, but uh, just some formatting tools that you can use uh, in Excel for your startup business. And I will do other videos that will go in detail of these individual things. But the goal of this video is for me to actually just give you a light description of how to use these also created an example spreadsheet uh, that will be available for free download so if you do like what's in here then you can actually just go in and download it and it has all of the functions and uh, formatting tools that I used or that I showed you it's actually using them so uh, let's just jump right into it the first one's gonna be table and data Excel is known for its table capabilities once you actually have data or information that is important to you in a table format it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to navigate it sort it and do all these different things with it so I'm gonna show you how to basically organize data in Excel so that you can then turn it into a table so then you can get all of the great features that comes with actually having the table formatted as that okay so whenever you are creating a table you want your columns to be the headers of whatever the table is and you want that to be the description of what's going to be below that so for me i own a graphics and printing company so something that i would create a table for is going to be let's just say the items that i'm selling the next one is going to be cost next one is going to be sales price so what am i selling it to my customers for the next one is going to be the profit of that and then is there a profit is going to be the question that i'm going to ask and then I'll show you guys because this is going to be one of the other functions when we get down. This is basically the headers of the table that I'm creating. And then below that, I'm going to enter in some information. So the first one is going to be hoodie. Below that, I'm going to have shirts because like I said, I own a graphics and printing company. So I do print apparel. The next one is going to be crew neck. This is what I sell a lot of. And then last and final one is going to be a hat. Okay, so now I would go in and I would put in the cost that it takes for me to actually acquire and get uh, these items. So hoodies, I get those for 10 bucks. Shirts, I get those for five. Crewnecks, I get for seven. And then for hats, I get those for five as well. Okay, so you'll see this was already formatted um, to be accounting, but if I wanted to change this and I didn't want it to look that way, and I just wanted it to be just currency, regular currency. This is where I can change the actual um, format of what the cells look like. So you can go in, you can make it um, different formats. So you can go in, you can change it. You can change it to a date, which in this case I don't need. I can change it to accounting and then let's just say currency. These are the different types of currency, numbers, these custom. You can go in and change it to whatever you want. But in this case, I just want it to be accounting because this is for our business, so we want it to look like accounting. And then the same format is gonna be for all of those. So if, like for here, you'll see that's just general. So I can type whatever I wanted to hear. This is general, but in these sales right here, they're all currency. So let's keep going. So for the sales price, I sell 
my hoodies for 25. I sell my shirts for 15. I sell my crew necks for 19. And then I sell my hats for 12. So that is a cost. So now we're gonna be getting into a quick formula and just very simple. So formulas essentially are just equations that you enter into a cell to actually compute something for you automatically and it's automated, which is the one thing or the one reason why I really like Excel because I can format and create functions that I just enter some data into particular cells and then it automatically changes it for me. So whenever you are doing a formula in Excel or you wanted to do a command or complete an equation, you wanna put equals. So in this cell, I want it to equal this minus that. And that's gonna tell me what my profit is. So I just click over to what I want and it's saying I18. I'm gonna say minus the actual cost of me actually purchasing it. I press enter and voila. It's saying that the profit of this line is gonna be $15, so that's amazing. So instead of me having to go in and do that myself, Excel will do it for you. And look at how automated this is. So let's say I actually change it and I make it $27.99. It tells me I make $17.99 for that. So that's, like I said, that is a great tool for you to have when you are creating these Excel sheets for your business, you can actually have a tourist automatically done for you. And the way, instead of you having to go in and do this for everything, a quick trick is you can take it, hover over in this corner, and you just drag down and it does everything for you. So it actually makes it relative to wherever um, the cells are. So as long as it's in the same spot, it's gonna calculate it the right way. So now that is our table. So now what we wanna do is now that our information is put in there, we want to turn this into an actual table. So the way you can do that, there's two different ways. You can just highlight the whole entire table and you can format the table and you can click whatever format that you want. Or you can just click anywhere inside of the table. So I can click here, here, anywhere inside of the table. Excel is so smart, it's automatically going to format and, and recognize that, hey, this is inside of this information. So I'm gonna stop here and include all of this in there. So let's do it from this way. And my business is orange, so I like to keep it really simple. So that's wrong, I don't want that. I actually want it to be just this. So I can go in and change that. So that's my table. My table, yes, it has headers because these are the headers that I created. And there you go, so now this is a table. And the good thing about this table is I can sort it the way I want. So if I wanna see everything that's $5, I'm gonna see that. So that is that is one of the, the first features about um, having a table that is great. So now let's get into formatting. So now that we have this table, one thing that we can do, or one of the great tools that you can have, is I'm a visual person and as a business owner, I'm pretty sure if you look at, you're looking at a spreadsheet of data, you want certain things to pop out to you so you know to either address it or that it's a good indicator that something good has happened. It's a simple way of doing that. So conditional formatting is gonna be this right here. And when you're looking at conditional formatting, um, there's so many different icons on here. I'm just gonna explain to you guys the simplest and most easy way that I use it that I think you can actually transfer immediately into you building your first spreadsheet uh, so you can actually understand how to do it. So the way that you wanna do it is you can do it either by a singular cell or you could do it by an entire row. When you are thinking about a table, you actually want it to do it for an entire column or row um, because in that situation, you want it to indicate something. So I know the sales price, let's say anything that is uh, $12, let's say I want something that is $12. So I would go into highlight the sales and I would say equal to, if it's equal to $12, then I want it to be, let's say I want it to be yellow, okay? So bam, that is how it works. So if I were to change anything here to 12, look, it, it changes it. I think this was 15. So yeah, so that is, that's how conditional formatting works. Hover in the corner, drag that down because we reviewed it. So now let's get into data validation. And this is the thing that one of the tools that I love the most, and I've created 
so many spreadsheets for my many different businesses uh, throughout the years, but I've also created them and sold them to different small businesses out there. And I've also used it to create uh, different templates that I have for free on my website as well. So feel free to go on my website, michaeltheentrepreneur.com backslash resources. I have many different uh, Excel sheets that you can actually download right now. And the reason why you want to use data validation is if you want to uh, pull particular information or you want uh, yourself or you want a customer, you want you know just something to be controlled you don't want someone to go in and be able to type that you want them to actually have to choose between something that you want so for example let's say I could go in and I can type in hoodie here but let's say I wanted this cell to actually I can choose anything from this list so the way you do that, there's two different ways you can do that. One is I say more professional and the other one is just like a quick way of doing it. In my opinion, it's better for you to actually just create a separate sheet and just put all of your list here because then it's just a quick way for you to edit and make changes to the list without having anything crazy um, or having to go in and change it and, and figure out where it's, gonna, where it's at or where you're pulling that list from. And you just have one place where you put all of your lists. So let's just do it the first way. Click this, you go into data, data validation. Oops, I'm just gonna click in here. And you would click this, scroll down to list, and you would put equals, and you would click, hold, and slide the cells that you would want to be a part of that list. And now you'll see it made you a drop down menu. So everything that's here, you can select. The other way to do it is let's just say this is gonna continuously grow over time. Uh, you can go in when you are selecting this data, you just make it to where it covers wherever you're going to enter that data in. So let's say this is a larger table. So you made this a larger table. You can do that and you just click it until you enter in some information. So let's just say I put something down here. I put short. Oops, it's not how you spell short. And then I go up here. You'll see it's down here. So until you go in and you enter information and you will have quite a few blanks. Uh, but honestly, that's fine. It's because you just you would just want to set it up that way. Now, the other way, let's say you actually make a list here and you say, hey, I want to put all of my master items on this page. I like indicators. So let's just say I'm going to change this to uh, colors are, are a good thing for me. So let's say I change it to that. So I know everything in this line is what I'm going to make my list out, out of. And then I want it to equal. So I want this cell to equal. this cell right here I'm gonna press enter so now it equals that and let's say like I said this is gonna be a table that you create and it goes all the way down let's say to this cell right here so that list would go all the way down to the table let's say we expanded the table eventually um, I would go in and I would want it to I would copy it down so that formula is gonna copy all the way down so anything anything that I enter from this all the way down is going to be a part of this list. And I have to edit this because it's only gonna look at these four. I needed to actually equal the other page. Oh, but in real quick, let's say we wanted to name this something. So this is something that we wanted to quickly reference. The way you do that is you highlight it all. You highlight everything. And then you go right here and I can name this. So item type and I need to make it one word it can't be two words so now when I highlight this it's gonna pop up as item type so now I can use that as the name of my list that I want this cell to reference so instead of me typing this in I would type delete all this out and I would say item type so if you want to be a little bit more sophisticated with your Excel sheets and make it to where it's quickly, it's easier for you to go in and make changes. I don't like those zeros. There's a way you can change that, but I'm not going to go over that in this. Okay. So the next thing is going to be the sum and we kind of use it over here in the profit, but essentially let's just say we wanted to sum 
let's say just the cost or the profits it doesn't really make sense in this case unless these are sales that we're getting but let's just say for the sake of this video we just wanted to sh use this so like i said with whatever function that you're going to use or formula you press equal and i want to sum all of the profit so if i sell one item of all of these items i want to know what that profit is is you type equal as you would do with any other function or uh, formula inside of excel you would type sum so that is the function that you're trying to use and you'll see all these different functions so all these are different functions that you can use uh, in excel but like i said we're just going to go over sum. we'll put parentheses and now it's going to tell us our arguments or what we need to do to actually complete that so it's asking us for the first number so what when you're looking at the sum this first number can be if i use it in the way that this formula is because it's giving you two different ways to do that i can either do it from individual sales so let's say i wanted to do this sale and then comma this cell and then comma this cell it's going to say zero because i did sporadic or random cells and that sometimes comes in handy but in this case since i already have a table and i'm organized with my data i can go in i'll replace that let's say i just wanted to do the profit so i'll click hold and i want to see if i were to sell one of all of these items what would my profit be and my profit would be 44 dollars once again, we can go back to the home tab, change what that looks like. We'll change it to currency or accounting. So that is the sum. So you can use that in so many different ways. Uh, another way that you can do it is if you have a table, you can also go up here and you can say auto sum and that'll also be there. So since you have a table, uh, there's a, quite a few things that comes with that. So now you can go in and you can do the minimum, you can do the average, you can do the count. So how many uh, items are in here, which we talk a little bit further down in this video. So you can use that as well. Uh, when you actually have a table, it helps you a lot. It makes it a lot easier for you to do that. So now let's go into some if. So some if this is where this data validation comes into play because I can select what I want to sum based off of what I selected. So these go hand in hand. So let's say I want this to give me the sum based off of what criteria or data validation that I selected up here. So the way you do that is it's gonna be equals sum, remember you type in the name of the function, sum if parentheses, and it's gonna say the range. So the range is gonna be where do I want it to find that data? The next thing we're going to put comma is going to be the criteria. So what do I want to find in that in that range? I wanted to find this cell right here. Right now it says hoodie, but it can be anything that I already created with that data validation or that list. And then last but not least, we wanted to give us the sum of what. So what is a sum range? So if it finds it, what do you want it to sum? And I want it to sum. Let's say I wanted to sum the sales price. Oops wanted to sum this column so now I would click it 25 so is that right it found hoodie and it gave me that let's see if it worked we're gonna change it to crew neck it should give me 19 did it give me 19 perfect so once again I want to change this format so now we did some if so this comes in handy when you have a large sheet right now we only have four different items and we don't have a lot of data but let's say we had thousands and thousands of entries because we've had so many transactions and you know we've had money going out as a debit and we had you know sales coming in as credits and all these different things that are happening and i just want to do a quick search to find out how much how many crew necks i sold throughout the month or i want to find out how many hats i sign up through the month and i can make this really whatever i want so whatever the data validation is um that's what it's going to be so i can have multiple buttons i can have multiple lists and multiple sums ifs for a particular criteria so that's why these come really in handy with the data validation and the sum and let's say i didn't have that data validation i had to type shirt it's going to make it very difficult for you to actually what if someone spells it wrong that's where you start running into issues so that's why data validation and some if functions work very well together so now let's get into the if function and this one is by far the most robust in my opinion, for a beginner that's doing Excel because it has so many different capabilities. But essentially, if you are looking at the if function, this is where you can get uh, really intricate and you a certain cell or a certain logical test meets that criteria. So for example, and I probably went over someone's head, but let's just say same thing. You wanna put equals if parentheses and it says logical test. So what is a logical test? Okay, so logical test is gonna be 
if the profit is greater than zero, comma, what do I want to have happen? So if the profit is greater than zero, which means it's a positive, that means I actually made a profit, I want it to say yes. So uh, sorry, I have to put that in parentheses whenever I want it to say something. So it says yes. If it's not, so comma, so what do I say if it's false? If it's less than zero, which that means it's a negative number, which we didn't make a profit, I want it to say no. And I press enter, close those parentheses. So is that true? Is this true? Yes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in this formula here. So if this is greater than zero, then we want it to say yes. If not, we want it to say no. So you see right here, and since I had it in a table, that first thing that we went over, it automatically does it for you. So this is a great thing about the if function, and I can make this say whatever I want it to say. So I can have this say raise price. Instead of it saying no, raise sales price. So let's say I were to change this. So let's say I sold it for less. So I sold this for only $7, which is terrible. It is say raise sales price. But I'm gonna go back to 25 and you see it's automated. It automatically does it for you. So you can have it to where when you are building your business, you can have these sales where it's the only thing that you actually enter in. You enter in this and you enter in that. And then everything else computes for you and you can actually see like, okay, like I'm not making a profit. I need to change it. I need to do these different things. So that is a great thing about the if function and you can take the if function and you can embed so many other functions in it because it's those arguments. It's a constant argument. So now let's move on to the next thing. So counter counter basically just totals a number of how much data is entered. Counter really works if you have like a checklist or you have a survey, let's say a four step process. So step number one, and then let's just copy this over. Hopefully this should go in and see what the pattern is. Step number two, three, four, and five, right? And then what we can do is we'll go in and we'll just say, you know, customer one, customer one. So this is your process from, you know, this can be whatever in your business that it is. Step number one, after you get the customer, you need to move them through everything. And let's say step number five is, you know, you actually deliver it. But this works well if you were to have um, a checklist, like I said, a checklist that's happening. So let's just say hypothetically, um, customer one, they got yeses. They did everything that they needed, right? You got through the whole process, right? And I can use the if function to say complete or finished or fulfilled, however I want to do that. And then let's say for this one, it's a yes. It's a yes. And hold on. Just gonna make it real simple copy so let's just say it's just random right so let's just say i'm just gonna delete these so let's just say i have three customers right and i created this to actually track the workflow of th us actually fulfilling their orders so we can see right here the first customer they're done the second customer there's step two three and four that's not complete so let's just say i wanted to count let's say the number in order to be complete needs to be five right so what it's gonna do, the counter function basically counts how many entries are in here. It doesn't look at the value, it just says, if there's something in this cell, we're gonna count it as one. Something in this cell, we're gonna count it as one, and then it's gonna total it up. So for instance, we'll do it here, and then we'll actually copy it over here so you guys can see what that'll look like if it's like a checklist. Okay, so once again, equals counter, oops, counter parentheses, and I'm gonna highlight what I want to be counted. That should give us five, and that is correct. So let's just do that same here, that same thing here. So counter, oops, counter, oops, I'm tripping guys. Counter, same range, and enter. So five, and then if I wanna copy this down, I take the corner, drag it down. 
So now this is saying, so I can see this person is complete, this person has three things they need to get done, and this person has one. So like I said, the count of function works very well if you know, you're know you just trying to count quick things. Now, the one thing about the count of function is if you put something in there, so let's say you put no in here, it's gonna count that as three. So you just need to make sure whatever process that you're using, you can use check checks. So you can make a data validation where it's uh, yes or no, or you can have it to where it's a blank and a X mark or a check mark, you can do that. Um, but you're creating that using all of the things I just showed you. And you can make a really comprehensive, great tool or checklist that you can have for your business and your workflow uh, from start to finish. So I love the count of function. It's so diverse. There's so many different things you can do. So now let's look at count if. So count if is like some if to the sum function. So count if is like that to the count of function. So let's just say you only want to count if it meets a certain criteria. So now instead of using this, we're going to use this because we want to use this data, data validation or this drop down menu. So let's look at this function equals count if. Okay, so the range, where do I want it to find? And this is really all it's going to do is it's just going to count how many times the criteria. So comma, the criteria is going to be this because I want to see how many times does this word show up in this data. It shows up one time, obviously, because there's only one hoodie in here. But let's say I were to expand this and let's say that this was. Uh, let's say your expenses for the month and you actually went in and you imported your bank statements and you have debits or you have something that you want to count how many times you're actually, you know, those different types of transactions, you want to categorize that. This is great for you to have because now instead of you going in and you counting how many hoodies you sold for the month, you can go in and just type in or use a data validation and type it in right there sorry you guys can see how all those different things entered in because it's within that list that i created but anyways yeah so let's say i wanted to do crew next how many crew next is going to be one so now that we did this i actually want to move this over to the actual spreadsheet because all of these different uh functions or formatting conditional uh tools i actually created a spreadsheet and once again this is for download i'm gonna put it down in the description but i'm also going to give you guys my website it's mykillentrepreneur.com backslash resources so you guys can actually download this and use it for your business so let's just go over it so you guys can actually see what this looks like in real life in real like real life right uh so let's look at the table so here goes the table right here it's great there's one thing that I didn't say originally that you need to be aware of when you do your table, but you don't want any data to the right or to the left of the table because when you go to sort something, it's going to hide that information. So let's say I only wanted to see credits. Watch what happens to this side. It takes that away. So you want to make sure that there's no vital information or keys or anything like that that you want to see all the time to the left or the right of your table because like I said, once again, when you go to sort that data, it's gonna hide whatever that is. So um, you just don't want that to happen. Like I said, so when it comes to the table, the most important thing that you need to do is make sure that you put in the data and it stores the data that, that is important to your business. So just keep that in mind. The next thing is gonna be conditional format and I want you guys to see the different rules that I had. So I think it was anything was very simple, anything that's under or manage rules. So anything that's under zero, I want it to be red. Anything that's over zero, I want it to be green. It's very basic. Um, next thing is gonna be data validation. So I use data validation right here. Well, I use it in multiple different places because I love having drop down menus, but I can select. So I use that simple way that I showed you guys. So uh, the name, I wanted to be able to sort and get data based off of me just quickly just looking up the names. I want to see how much money uh, was either made or spent by the name. So let's say I wanted to look at it based off of shirt sales. So how many shirt sales? I only had one shirt sale and now it's $25. So that's a quick way for me to be able to do that. So I just basically did a data validation for the individual columns. So for some, I put that up here. So I'm gonna be releasing my income statement. Yeah, so the income statement is also called the profits and loss statement. So it's important for you to know like if your business is profitable or it lost. Once again, if you are a small operation, you're a side hustler, 
you can do this if you're bigger let's say you still can't justify getting like a bookkeeper and you're not making a lot of money but you are making quite a few more sales a month uh, and you just want to be more organized you can go in and create like this spreadsheet or you can have this spreadsheet and just copy it per month so instead of you logging all of you know the transactions that you have for your business throughout the whole year which is what this is for uh, you can actually do it by month and then you can see using this system you can see were you profitable in that month or were you not profitable because essentially your gross profits and loss is going to be your revenue minus your expenses that's going to tell you if you made money or you didn't so this is more or less just how how did you make money uh for the whole year and then you can like i said you can do it per month so this is basically saying after it's all said and done for all of the transactions so for me let's say i have a really small business uh, a little side hustle and i have all the way up until march or whatever uh this is telling me hey i own i made 372 dollars and that's because i did make a sale in the middle of february but let's say i were to delete this bam i'm negative 78 because i didn't make a sale so so this is really uh, really important for you to see you know what your what your profits are and if you actually made money so the next one is going to be some if so this is basically summing it based off of this criteria so i use this so once again if uh, web hosting is going to sum it it's going to sum everything down here and say okay i was negative 200 dollars, so i spent 200 dollars on web hosting so the if function is going to be this right here because is my business profitable yes it is and it basically goes off of this information so it says if D5 is greater than zero, then I want it to say yes, which in this case it is because I am profitable. And then it's gonna say no if it's not. So in this case it is. Once again, I'm a visual person, so I also put some conditional formatting. So if it were to say, if it would be no, you guys saw it would be red, same thing up here. So if this is a negative, it'll say red. So the next one is going to be counter and that's down here. So I'm counting uh, how many transactions. So for purpose. So how many transactions, total transactions that I have in this period of time? And that's six, I only has six transactions. And then this is, once again, I'm using a data validation. So if I wanted to change this, so I just want it to be based off of the different type of uh, transaction that was made. So if I just wanna look at credit, so how many sales did I make? that's two and I could change that. So it doesn't have to be credit. It could be sales. It can be uh, paybacks. It can be withdrawals, can, whatever you want that criteria to be. And you can make that. So the type can only be whatever type of transaction that you want it to be. And you can also, like I said, make a validation based off of that. And I only had two credits. If you learned something in this video, please give it a thumbs up. There's a video that I really think you would like this on the screen. I will see you in that video.